Well, I'm Roger Kirby. I'm a consultant urologist, and I'm joined today by two of my consultant colleagues, Damien Hambury and John Anderson. And the Hi, reason Roger. the reason we're here making this uh, short film is that, uh, rather ironically, all three of us have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. So I'm going straight over to John. John, you had a bit of a shock just I about did. a year ago. I did, but let's deal with the irony first, Roger. Commonest cancer in men, prostate cancer. Second True. commonest cause of death from cancer in men. Where's the surprise? Three of us at this age sat here on the sofa. About four months after I'd had a normal PSA, I found a lump in my abdomen. I had a CT scan, multiple big metastases. Metastases are secondary cancers, and they raise the question, well, where's the primary? There was nothing on the scan. I had a biopsy of the lump. And blow me down, the pathologist came back and said, this has come from your prostate. This is despite the fact that I have no symptoms. I had a normal PSA just four months earlier. I was fit, I was well, I was active. I've had five cycles of chemotherapy now, a drug called docetaxel. I seem to have come through that very well. I have had little in the way of side effects from the treatment, which is great. So, whilst you wouldn't want to be dealt these cards, I'm very happy to be sat here talking about a disease which we've treated all that long. And you say you dealt with it, you, know, you got the, this hand of cards, you dealt with it. What about your family? Part of the problem is when you're talking about a disease you've treated all your life, you're being both the doctor when you break the bad news to your family, and you're also having to support them about you. Well, Damien, I think you had a nasty surprise just before Christmas, if I remember. It was about three years ago. I was 53. I was fitting well up to then, playing lots of sport with no risk factors or family history. Uh, and then I got some urinary symptoms and uh, went to see the GP just before Christmas, about two, sort of two months later. And he examined me and uh, uh, took blood for a PSA test, which came back at 29. I came up and had some biopsies, which were not too uncomfortable, and had some scans afterwards. And they showed that I, I did have some quite high-grade prostate cancer, which had gone out of the uh, prostate capsule, the uh, uh, lining around it, and there was a, a little bit of an abnormality in the pelvis bone. So then I went on to this hormone treatment, and, and uh, it uh, just gives you some hot flushes and takes a bit of the spring out of your step. And then about five months later, I came up and had some external beam radiotherapy, which was just a treatment for about half an hour, uh, once a day for two months. And it meant I could still carry on walk, uh, working uh, in the morning. And, um, and then I was back at work after a couple of uh, weeks. And uh, I'm now two years down the road. My PSA has come right down to... 0.06, I feel great. Well, I have a different story, and we've heard chemotherapy, we've heard radiotherapy. I'm a robot surgeon, and surprise, surprise, I opted when my PSA rose to 4.4 and the biopsies came back positive. Um, I opted for robotic surgery myself. And I think I've been lucky, although it was a weird experience, to be honest, going down into my own operating theatre. And uh, But I think I learned a lot from it. And to be honest, I... I, I found it not really uh, a scary experience. I found it really interesting. And I feel sort of energised now, three months after, because I think that I'm through it, I'm back to work and feeling pretty normal. Operating on so many, I think I've done 1,050 robot operations now, but being on the receiving end really has changed my attitude towards patients. I think I understand, I empathise, I sympathise, I'm certainly able to give them better advice about catheters and clips and the sort of discomfort you get from the wound. And I think that by talking about it will not only help us by sharing and disclosing, getting support from our colleagues and our friends, but I think it will help other people too because men tend to clam up and keep these things secret. So we'd like a, a sort of step change in the way that people address these problems, but we're making important steps forward and uh, we just wish everybody who's in the same situation as us the very best of luck.